Former Senator Al Franken, the Minnesota Democrat, joins us in a primetime exclusive to talk politics, future, present, and past. Senator, pleasure to see you. Great to see you. How you been doing? I've been doing great. I've been really busy. I, you know, it's very important for me to have my voice out there. I've been doing this uh, podcast, and that sounds pathetic usually because there's 600,000 podcasts, but I, uh, a lot of people are listening to there's it. There's only one Al Franken podcast, though. That, that's true. And uh, we have uh, Jeffrey Tubin's joined me uh, a couple times. Uh, Never I been invited myself. That's true. Uh, well, we, we do very deep dives on issues. Oh, then I don't belong there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't know. I exactly. thought it was a you fitness got, thing. No, no. Like, I'll give you an example. When we did, uh, when the Kavanaugh hearings happened, I didn't want to do that day's news, mm -hmm. but I had uh, Jeffrey on to explain the Federalist Society so that people get a perspective on what, right. on what, that is. Yeah, and it's not a competition. I mean, I am a lawyer, though, just so you know. I did not know that. No, it's all right. No, I actually I mean, did. No, I, I did. yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I don't have to be on the podcast. It's just weird that I haven't been at that. But I'll let it go, because really, that's not okay, what this is okay. about. Okay, well, um, <laughs> we'll see how you do here. I'm, I'll tell you what. I'm starting with levity, because I don't see much cause for joy with what's going on in your party uh, right now. Uh, you tell me, though, it's how do you see the state of play? Well, the state of play is what it is. We are, it appears that we're down to the two candidates and they'll hash it out. And um, I've been frustrated because I've been watching these debates and I, for five, six, seven, going back to debates, I've been kind of screaming at the, at the screen going like, talk about Trump. Talk about Trump. Instead of? Instead of uh, arguing about, uh, well, uh, let's take health care. Okay, well, we'll have, it's good that we're all looking to get to universal. But we won 40 seats the last cycle. And we won it for a reason, which is the Republicans win in 16. They have both houses, and they're going to repeal and replace. And what did they come up with? Not a. 23 million Americans lose their health care under that plan. You lose your protections. Mm -hmm. States can get rid of all these different uh, protections the president on existing says, conditions. The president says that's not true, but he is in court no, right he, now fighting to get rid of them, just for the record. He doubled down. After losing 40 mm -hmm. seats, he doubles down and he joins the state's attorney's general that's right. suit to uh, declare pre-existing conditions and all of Obamacare. The entire thing, yes, it's including, going on right now. including free vaccinations. Mm -hmm. That's part of the protections of the, of the AC. Relevant right now with what we're facing, even though we don't have a vaccine. That's why I brought it up. Thank you. <laughs> here's, the, here's the problem, though. They kept doing it granular debates about whose single payer system would happen faster and for more trillions or less trillions. And you're not having that debate in the general, but you were obsessed with it in some purity test. What do you think the reality is of what happens in the general and what you can get done even if you win? Oh, first of all, what we can get done in healthcare if we win may be different from a single payer without insurance. It, if Bernie, even if Bernie wins, you know, when I first got to the Senate, we were, that was when we were crafting ACA and I went up to Bernie cause I knew he was single payer. And I said, Bernie, if you like, I'll join you on single payer, but we're 58 votes short, you know? And so I, what'd he say? He kind of laughed. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, what we can get you know, every other developed country has uh, universal health care, but they all have some insurance, uh, private insurance that you can get. So they're... Uh, Most do have supplemental plans, a special... Well, they uh, all do. Especially for special care and stuff like that. So, uh, the senator says he can get it all done um, as single payer, and that's right. the way to do it. And he has never expressed any flexibility about it. For well, him, it's about authenticity. What is it for you? Well, you know, he, uh, 
that's what we're hashing out now, and that's a very appropriate discussion. But we need to be talking about Donald Trump and how awful he is as not just a president, but as a human being. And look, right now we have this coronavirus. <laughs> when you have a crisis like this, the strongest thing you can bring to it as a leader is credibility. Mm. And he has none. He said his reaction today has been perfect. Not as perfect as the Ukraine transcript. I, I'm, I'm not well, kidding you. you. Know, That's perfect. what he said, but close. Perfect is perfect. It's either perfect or not perfect. But he it's compared it to the perfect. Ukraine transcript. I know. Well, you know how perfect that was. But what does that tell you about what you're up against, that that's what he'll say talking about coronavirus while you have 100 debaters talking about the granular mechanisms of single-payer health care? Well, w once we have the nomination, whoever has it, they'll be talking about their plan. It'll either be Biden or, or Bernie. What about or bust? What about that as a possibility? They are nowhere near each other. These two gentlemen and I of don't their think they're that far apart. Look, I was there for the ACA when we legislated that. Bernie didn't get what he wanted, but he not only voted for it, but he did a community health centers. Mm -hmm. That was a big contribution to that. I did the medical loss ratio. Medical loss ratio says that insurance companies have to spend at least eighty percent of their premiums on actual health care, not on CEO salaries, not on advertising, not on, uh, not on administration. 85% for a large group. That should go to 90. But, you know, what That's a great idea in terms of controlling costs and making sure you get uh, effectiveness of dollar. Yeah, Americans got $1.5 billion back from the insurance companies who didn't meet the medical loss ratio. And before the ACA, there were companies that had medical loss ratios of 40%. I totally get it. And look, I know you have no official position for the audience. Not Biden, not Bernie. You're watching. You're a concerned citizen and Democrat. But Sanders, it's interesting to hear. Uh, we know that he moved with you guys on ACA. But that's not his pitch right now. Well, if, he's, if he becomes president, he will try to get single payer without insurance. I don't... I, I doubt very much that he would be able to get that. What does that look like, though? If your party is saying, listen, Mr. President, we're not going single payer. Uh, our own party you can didn't go, want it. You can go single payer, but also have insurance. You can do that as well. You can say, I mean, that's... We've just never heard him say that. And he says... Well, he doesn't say that. This is a revolution. We're all in. We're going all the way. That's what we need. Yeah, but he's going to... We have... Three branches of the government. <laughs> and the Congress has two houses. I know, but that's why they're hitting so, him with the Trump stick, which, look, person to person, I don't know how you make that comparison between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. I don't see it. No, it's But they'll say, yeah. yeah, except he's equally as inflexible. He's equally his no, way or the highway. You no, disagree? No, that's what I'm saying. When we were doing the ACA, he you know, contributed in the way he contributed. Community health centers is extremely important. It wasn't terribly controversial. We all were, were for that. Um, you know, uh, there are some things that we, the a public option should have been in that. That was Joe Lieberman killed that. There are a couple things that we could have gotten in there. I think if uh, Scott Brown hadn't won and we had a lot more flexibility to, uh, to recraft it, but we got what we got. The thing is, is that we lost big in 2010. Yes. We lost the House. In 2014, we lost the Senate because of health care. Yes. 2018, they lost because of health care. Yes. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is people, they can get rid of, they can put back lifetime caps. Yes. They can put annual caps. Yes. They'll get rid of... Medicaid expansion. That's what they had in that bill. Let me tell you something about Medicaid expansion. Here are the last three states by referendum to approve Medicaid expansion. Idaho, mm -hmm. Utah, Nebraska. And this is in, it. Medicaid expansion is incredibly popular. When Except the, it was politically weaponized, and Republican governors wanted to not do it if they could as a way of rejecting well, the ACA. This is how we won the governorship right. in, in Kentucky. The, 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 yes. it's, uh, Kansas just adopted, not by referendum of the governor and the legislature. Right. It's incredibly popular. When 
when they dropped their bill, that would have 23 million Americans would have lost their health care, part of what they were going to do is defund, there was going to be no Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. I went to red counties in Minnesota. I went to rural hospitals. At those rural hospitals, I, I had these town meetings. People were crying. This is what Medicaid expansion did. Yeah, it's life or death for them. Other than mostly paying for your mortgage or your rent, this is the biggest nut in most people's lives, if you're healthy. This is what Medicaid expansion did in rural America. These hospitals now had far less uncompensated care, That's meaning right. when someone comes into the emergency room and they had no insurance at all, the hospital ate it. That's right. Now, now they, didn't they have had to Medicaid. Eat it That's right. Now the hospitals had a lot more money. That's right. What could they do? They get more doctors. Yes. More technicians, more machines, more it's nurses. It's in the research. It's in the data. And they did that, and they became the largest employer in the county. They could do uh, health care. You could get... Uh, uh, your mom could get health care at home. Mm -hmm. I had a couple that was crying because they didn't know what they would do with her mom. I hear you. Let me ask you something. One, this is not what your people are arguing right now, just so you know. This is not the way they're arguing it. Well, we'll get a nominee, and that's well, the way they should be we'll, arguing. We'll, my, we'll my see. View. We'll see. The question is, will Bernie change his positions if it's him? Can Joe Biden make the case if it's him? You make the case very well. Do you miss being in the Senate? Yeah, of course I do. I mean, it was, I could do stuff for, for, for people. I could do, uh, I'd like the medical loss ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, I could do, that was a big thing. I could do small things. I, because of what I wrote into the reform of No Child Left Behind, uh, foster kids no longer have to change schools if they get a new foster family yeah, outside their district. Happen. So these kids now can stay in the school that they want to stay because they have a great teacher that they love or they have an activity, a sport or mm -hmm. theater that they love, or they have these things called friends. And I just know there's some kid that is playing basketball now with his teammates, even though his foster family is in a different school district. I required them to... Get a ride. Give the kid a ride. It's the beautiful part of public service. Yeah. And let me ask you something about... And I'm continuing. That's what I'm doing now is trying to make a difference right. in a whole bunch of different ways. And look, and you can. Um, it's just yeah. regrettable when somebody who has that kind of passion for public service winds up having to exit it not on their own terms. The New Yorker comes out with an article. Eight of the senators who were against you are in this article saying they regret it. And they say that to different degrees. In fact, some go much further than that. We're going to put up the senators' names and the fact that they say it. When you saw this, how did it hit you? Well, I knew those eight had, had apologized to me. I mean, they had done it privately. Well, why apologize? They take a vote that goes against you, and then they say they regret it? It wasn't a vote. It was... Yeah. A right. letter, you know, right. they signed up for this thing to me. Right. It, it's, um, I appreciated them saying that they should have given me due process. Uh, so, uh, and, you know, I'm uh, friends with, with them, and I, I'm a forgiving person, and I was grateful that they said that to the New Yorker. I am grateful that you took this opportunity. I'm grateful to you. Your voice is needed. As uh, it is unusual in your party right now to hear the way you're talking based on the state of play. And you are welcome here anytime to help us make sense of the election going forward. I'll, I'll take you up on that. And look, the podcast thing hurts. I'm not going to lie, Al. It hurts. <sighs> I can't just find something you're expert on. Oh. Uh, no, no, <laughs> forget it. Good luck going forward. You bet. All right, listen. Franken makes good points on the reality of health care reform within his party and in government. But his party's got a bigger problem than policy purity right now. Did you see the show last night? A Biden supporter and a major Bernie Sanders surrogate got into a fight that is continuing today, and it does not bode well for the party going forward. Let's take a look next. <laughs> 